Uh, tonight, it's the kitchen experience for me. All right. So for, this is meal preparation and planning part two. And I see Vonda's here. Hey, Vonda. Uh, she can hear Hi. me OK. Is is my picture frozen? Yeah, your picture is frozen and doing kind of weird things. But I can... yeah, it's got this stuff up at the top. I don't know what's wrong with my computer. Well, maybe you could shut it down and re-log on or whatever, you know, reset your computer. I'll try that because that looks like a ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> it will yeah. be around in the room when you come back. Oh. Um, so before we start the meeting, I just want to tell you about my uh, experiences down, our experience down in Roseburg uh, this last Saturday. Uh, so. Uh, Roseburg is kind of where I got started uh, when I heard Sanjay Gupta and the story of the Cleveland clinics, um, how these heart patients got reversed by changing their diet, unclogging their arteries and improving their health. And so I started teaching free classes down in Roseburg and the first class, three people came. Uh, for 18 sessions, the second class, 20 people came for 18 sessions, then 40 people for the next set, and 80, and then 135, and we had to split it into two classes. And well, anyway, uh, the tradition carried on in Roseburg. I turned the material over and uh, begged one of the doctors down there, Dr. Heidi Berry, to keep doing the classes. And she came to a series and said, you know, these classes are important, not just for a few people, but for all of my patients. So she began teaching in combination with UC Veg, and they've developed, um, they became a Blue Zone community, uh, a project. And so they started doing community walks, uh, uh, grocery shopping tours. They've done some movie events and potlucks and whatever they could do to kind of stimulate the interest. Well, as it turns out, uh, they started a new class in January this year and uh, over a hundred people uh, came to their class. They do it both in person and by Zoom. And uh, they've got a, a pretty large uh, church facility that they're able to use down there. Well, anyway, they had their first potluck which was a possible super spreader of disease event because <laughs> when we went down there, Christine and I were the only two masked people. Uh, oh. The rest were unmasked and there were 138 people filling mm. uh, the church with uh, only whole plant foods. Uh, some were a bit processed, uh, but they were plant foods, no animal products. And um, um, it was heartwarming to see so many people, many young people. Uh, I met a couple doctors who are really promoting plant-based diets, youngies. Uh, one's a podiatrist and others a family doc. It was um, very inspiring to me to see this taking off. They even had the news media down for the event which I had begged news media to cover the events when I was down there, uh, they, the news people could care less about what was going on, but times have changed and they actually covered the events and they had a, uh, news clippings on it. Uh, I made today's paper, the news review. Uh, I guess I've said enough about it other than it was really fun to be down there and, and seeing what that community has done. And I know that's gonna happen here in Eugene. It's gonna be bigger than that. Uh, they've had a few more years of, of doing this than we have up here. And then I'd love to see that not only in, in Roseburg and Eugene Springfield, but in Salem and in Portland and in Bend in every place around our state and then spread throughout the country. So that's the dream that I have. And uh, I'm happy to see all of you here um, sharing in this tonight. So that's my introduction for tonight. <laughs> Has nothing to do with what we're gonna talk about on food. 
Um, but uh, let's see. Uh, are there any new people who have kind of logged on who haven't been here before? Scott and I would love to hear how you heard about the classes and whether, you know, who sent you and that sort of thing. Bonnie. Hi, I was, uh, I'm one of your patients and you suggested it and I'm here. Well, uh, that's thrilling. You know, when a, a doctor suggests that a patient do something different with their life and they actually do it, it's a thrilling experience. <laughs> it's not always the case okay. uh, that we can be convincing enough to get someone to really uh, make a move to do something different with the health. So well, kudos yeah, to you. We're welcome and we're happy to have you. Thank you. It seems foolish to see a doctor if you're not going to take his advice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a good comment. How about you, Ann? Uh, hi, I'm in Michigan. And um, I've been following many people, including Chef AJ, which I'm sure you know who she is. Yes, we do. And, and um, yeah, I'm like 60, 65 pounds down and off of medications. And yeah, so I, I'm not exactly sure how I found this, but I think uh, just because you, you keep looking, you know, you keep searching for good things. Uh -huh. And um, you must have been on my mail list at one time because I also noticed there was a pediatrician doctor in some of your stuff. And I have listened to him before. So um I think that's where it was, but I know I've listened to your site before. There's another one in uh, Colorado, I think, that I've listened to the library people there that cook and do things. So anyway, so I'm happy to be here. It's 10 o'clock, though, so <laughs> I'm not sure how many times I will be live. <laughs> well, welcome. Uh, we're thrilled to hear that story, of, co of course. Uh, hearing the word spread across the country is uh, one of the goals that we have, ultimately. Um, I love what you're doing, uh, and I wish there was something more here. I know we have a plant group here in Saginaw, and um, it's it's a lot smaller, um, but quite a few people come, And um, but it's not as widespread, and I wish I could do some more with that and thinking about it. So uh, how I could do that, I'm retired, so how can I spread this, you know? Well, so, we'll, yeah. we'll be happy to work with you and share some of the things that we've done. And uh, for a while, you can invite them to come to these sessions a little bit if they care to, or they can go to the livelifestylemedicine.com site, uh, review some of the archive sessions and the resources. And, um, you know, there's no maybe cost. Maybe some of them do. Maybe huh? some of them already, maybe some of them already do, you know, um, since, since 2020 happened, I just started with the group and 2020 happened and then boom. So I really have only met with them a couple of times and then that happened and um, just haven't really rejoined. So it's quite cold here too. So <laughs> we're not out and about all the time either. So <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, keep doing what you're doing, keep uh, learning and having fun with this and uh, spreading the word and uh, you'll find uh, it'll bring you joy like it does uh, for Scott and myself. Yeah, I don't have the medical background or anything like that, but I was a teacher. And so, don't you know, worry we about like to the share. medical background uh, scaring you off because trust me, most medical professionals don't have much uh, training in nutrition. And uh, my doctor men, didn't. Yeah, men, <laughs> most have no clue as to how to really help patients uh, reverse their disease. So uh, if you get and the I, knowledge. Um, and I think important. sometimes it's pretty discouraging, actually, because when I first started out losing, he didn't take me off the medicine or anything. And then when I went back later, he said, how are you doing this? The first thing was, are you keto? Are you going keto? <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, good. You're not doing that. Good. You know, but then uh, when he walked away, he said, you know, you've made my day. Oh, and wow. I think, yeah. And then he wanted to me, I had written out what I was doing because I brought books and things to him. And he said, can I make a copy of that? <laughs> and I said, certainly. And you can send anybody my way. <laughs> um, but it's kind of, you know, it's hard to connect that way. But um, yeah, we do what we can do. 
try to spread the word, right? So yeah, people like yes. you are doing a great job. It was really inspiring to hear your story and what you've been doing. And I wrote down, I wrote notes, of course. <laughs> always taking teachers, we always take notes. I think anybody that's doing this, it's a study in health. It just is. That's great. Yeah. Well, thanks for well, thank sharing you. that. Thank and, you. And uh, you're welcome anytime. And are there any other people who care to... Uh, say hello. You can just unmute yourself and say who you are. You don't have to put your hand up if you don't want. Um, so I just want to see Scott. I want to make sure everybody knows who you are, the new players and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Scott Wagnon, uh, physician assistant working in internal medicine and do these classes with Charlie. And if you if you are new and you haven't watched the introduction lectures, I would encourage you to go back to the class website. It's just www.livelifestylemedicine.com. And under the class archives, uh, watch the my introduction class from a couple, three weeks ago and Charlie's from two weeks ago. And then we did meal planning part one last week and today's part two. And you can then you can jump in, continue with the live classes or or catch the recordings. We put them up there. And I also have a tutorial uh, posted on the homepage of the website. So if you kind of aren't sure where to find the different things, then just uh, watch that tutorial. And I give an overview of where everything's at, the classes, uh, the recordings, all the resources that are there available for free. Uh, Meryl. Thank you. Um, I wanted to let you know that I got on the Patreon site and I was at first very intimidated uh, because the only choice that it seemed that I had was to donate $18 a month. And that was a little overwhelming to see. And I ignored it and I made a one-time donation and then two days later quit because otherwise that one-time donation would have repeated monthly and it would have been thousands of dollars. So <laughs> I, I, I'm not up for that yet, <laughs> but um, I did want to say it was pretty easy to do. I, I have to say I'm a little intimidated by that and I don't like that they're going to skim off. Um, they take a percentage of what is donated. And so um, maybe as we grow, we can talk about maybe, um, you know, having a treasurer and, and checks and, and all that kind of thing done and become, you know, a true nonprofit and, and not have some outside organization be able to skim off that. But I, but I did want to say it's not as intimidating as I thought it would be. So, I, but, I, so I wanted to just share that with other folks. Yeah, just to chime in, that's a, uh... Uh, our Eugene plant-based providers were an official 501c3 nonprofit. And so that's www.eugeneplantbasedproviders.com. And that's a separate from these classes. It's a group we're doing community events for free. We do dietitian led grocery store tours, walks, potlucks. We have a movie night next month. So we, we're doing community, free community events. And, and uh, Sean is, Sean, uh, is the runs the website and he's the one that picked the Patreon page. He's he's looking into finding a different platform because yeah, the Patreon does not have a one-time donation. They only do monthly donations, but you can do as, sm as small of amount as a dollar a month. But, um, but like I did $20 a month donation, which is like, yeah, that's 240 bucks a year, but yeah, you're right. It skimmed $2 off per month. So it, it says I, I'm donating $18 a month when I really do right. $20 a month, but, but right. yeah, he's, I he's, donated, he, I donated a hundred dollars and it came down to 90 something dollars. And then, like I said, two days later, I stopped it because a hundred dollars yeah. a month would have been cost. Per yeah. Month. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. So yeah. he's going to look, he's going to look for a platform Great. that, that has a one-time donation option. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Meryl, for letting us know about that. Yeah. I, well, I just really believe in, I mean, it's, we're all in it together and I want to support, the, support this. Your generosity is unbelievable. So thank we, you. We want you all to know that Scott and I take abs absolutely no money. Uh, no one actually is taking money. We have 
uh, actually just contributed our own money for the events to set up at booths or whatever it is. It's, um, and we don't have any expectations of having people contribute, but you know, in order to do some events uh, like a, attending these health fairs, they have a, a fee of, I don't know, four to $600 sometimes to set up a booth and spread the word among people. We've been using our own finances to this day, and that's why we set up the set, this site uh, in case there were people who were able to donate, but your feedback is appreciated. We'll try to fix that. Uh, Kayeri. Kayeri, and then Bonnie. Hi, um, so I'm a treasurer for a different nonprofit and we use PayPal and they have a nonprofit option where you can set it up as either a one-time payment or a monthly payment. They do take a small fee if you do it a certain way, but if you go from an email address to another email address, they don't take a fee. So you could have your, um, your person check that out. And th the nice thing about PayPal is it's international and it will automatically um, do the money uh, exchange rate for you. Great, thank you. I'll, I'll let Sean know about PayPal as a nonprofit one-time donation option. Yeah, and the, when the person comes, uh, clicks on that, what comes up is a box that says, do you want to do it as a monthly or do you want to do it as a one time? So they get every single time it comes up, they get the option. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. OK, um, so I think we have a quorum here <laughs> and we're ready to continue on with some food choices for those of you who are new. Um, again, like Scott said, you could go to the website and uh, look at the archive first couple introductory sessions and last week. Uh, tonight we'll continue on and I'm going to go back to the gallery and um, I have some things to share with you tonight. We have um, Lisa Chick, who's our medical student, who has some things to share with you um, a little later. And then we have Vonda, who um, Vonda and Lisa Chick uh, both uh, started out the Facebook page, and there's now over 300 and close to 30 people in that on the Facebook page. Uh, so kudos to you for starting it, and uh, you know helping support other people. And Vonda was going to share some of. Uh, her thoughts on food, perhaps recipes. I'm not sure what she has to offer. I'm excited to hear what you have to say. So do you know how to share your screen, Vonda, or whatever. If you have problems, I'll make you a co-host. Um, I don't know how to share my screen and my computer keeps like being weird and freezing and making weird stuff up at the top. So I kept leaving the meeting and coming back. <laughs> All right, so it looks like it's pretty good right now. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna make you a co-host just to see if that makes any difference. And, and I think you'll see something that says you'll accept it or whatever. Oh, okay. And then uh, if you have something to share, uh, pictures or whatever. Um, uh, I don't have any pictures. I did write some notes down. If you wanna share the notes or if you just wanna talk, that's fine too. Um, yeah, I think I'll just talk. Okay. Yeah. Um, so my husband and I went whole food plant-based uh, three years ago in February. Uh, we met Scott in a little church in Springfield. We went twice before we went online. And we just went all in. I got rid of the food in the house that wasn't good. Um, and I would say we're about 90% whole food plant-based. Um, I don't know what my husband eats when he's not home, but he loves the food that I cook. Um, I think the biggest lesson that I learned in the last three years, um, was, um, to only talk about eating whole food plant-based when I was asked about it. For the first two years, I was shouting from the rooftops to anybody and everybody and, um, people don't want to hear it. 
unless they're interested in um, Nutmeg Notebooks, husband Tom, she's on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. Uh, he shared that one day and I was like, oh man, I need to do that. <laughs> so I don't shout it from the rooftops anymore, even though I want to. Um, I love coming to class. Um, I haven't been here for several months because of medical health stuff with my elderly dad. Um, when I was in class, I asked a lot of questions. Um, I had a notebook. I always took notes. Sometimes I would go back and re-listen to the class once they started recording them. Um, I started a whole food plant-based cookbook and uh, I love to get recipes off the internet. My husband loves to find them. Um, I would say half of the recipes turn out good. <laughs> uh, I listen to YouTube videos a lot. Um, I love Chef AJ. Uh, I love her recipes, most of them. Um, Dr. Bolshevich, who wrote Fiber Fueled. Um, I listened to Nutmeg Notebook, uh, Well Your World with Dylan Holmes and his wife Reeves. They have really good recipes. Um, I love the exam room live um, with Chuck Carroll, the weight loss champion, Dr. Clapper and Dr. Greger. And there's probably other ones that I listen to, but um, I just, it's my passion. I probably listen to videos and watch them every day while I'm getting ready, while I'm making dinner. Um, I just, I don't know, it's just came my whole life. <laughs> um, when I first started out, I didn't know what to make. And uh, the handouts that Scott had given us at class, I taped them to the outside of my cupboard and it helped me get started making dinners. Um, and then I just started making a list of foods that we ate and I would just kind of go back through those. And uh, that was really helpful to have the handouts from Scott. Um, one of our favorite dinners in the beginning was um, a nacho baked potato. It's on the Forks Overnight's website. Um, I found a taco filling that is great. Um, and I got, finally found a uh, veggie burger after trying like four or five different recipes. Um, I like Chef AJ's sweet potato burger. Um, it cooks great, it stays together, and it stays together when you eat it, which is, um, it was great. Um, I do make a weekly menu. Um, it's been a little bit different the last few months with my dad, but um, I'll just make up, put like five dinners on there and uh, we do go out to eat. Um, and that's, that's very helpful to know what I'm gonna make ahead of time. And it's really nice to not have to remember to, have to take something out of the freezer um, to defrost because everything's right in the fridge most of the time. Um, I've also found that when I do go shopping, if I cut up the broccoli and the cauliflower, um, I'll grate the carrots or cut them up and they're gonna print my computer. Uh, I do batch prep um, salads. I don't batch prep anything else really. Um, it just doesn't seem to work for me. I don't like reheated rice. Some people do, we just don't like that. Um, and I finally found a ranch dressing after trying about four or five of them. I love nutmeg notebooks. Um, it lasts for about a week in the fridge and it tastes just like ranch. Um, and oh, my one of my favorite sayings that I've learned um, is from Chef AJ. She has said, if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. Mm. And I found that to be true. Mm. And I don't know why my computer keeps doing that. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear you quite well. Your face is a little frozen, but yeah, but we can I, hear I everything know. you're saying. You're you're welcome. So, so what was your biggest challenge the first month, maybe, Vonda? Would you say what was the biggest challenge when you went went all in plant based? Um, I would say just trying to come up with a meal. I was so used to having chicken and you know a starch or rice or potato and and a vegetable on the side and just having like a bowl type dinner um and just coming up with ideas and i would just go back to 
the paper that was taped to my cupboard from you and go, okay, this is, I need to start with step one and pick this and then I'll pick this and pick that and I'll just throw it together. And very satisfying, very filling. Um, and I think it was just getting used to making dinner a different way. Um, but now it's easy. You know, I don't have to even plan what I'm going to make sometimes. It's like, I'll just pull everything I have out of the fridge, bake a potato, and I, we got dinner. So you try to keep it pretty, sim pretty simple, it sounds like. Um, I try to. Um, I do make recipes off the internet. Um, and that's a little bit more work, but um, staying simple, I think, is is easy. <laughs> it makes everything easier. Yeah, great. Thanks. You're welcome. Does anyone have any questions for Vonda or what she shared on anything she shared so far? Okay. Well, Vonda, thank you very much. And Anne, you have your hand up and Kyari yes, um, has a hand up and someone else. Vonda, Vonda yeah. you talked about a list that Scott gave you that you put on your inside of your fridge. Is that available somewhere on the website? I, mean, I guess I'm asking Scott too. Um, yeah, I believe it's available on the website and um, okay. I take it to the outside of my cupboard. Yep. Um, now it's on the inside because I feel like I know what I'm doing now but sure. just to get rolling and get started. Um, I believe they're on the website, aren't they? So, so which one were you talking? Are you talking about meal building basics or my meal planning handout or the one I went over last week? I don't know if that's- if Could you go to the about. website and just show uh, sure. our new people where the information is so that they can get sure. into that? I, don't I think it was the meal planning steps. Um, I, I just- printed them all out and cut them all up and put them all in my cupboard. So. <laughs> okay. It's so like meal, probably meal building basics, maybe that one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a visual here. person, so I need to see stuff. So here's the website, livelifestylemedicine.com. So under resources, if you click the resources tab and go down to handouts from classes and then um, the meal building basics handout is right here. This is just kind of like, Really, really simple. This is yeah. like just basically, I don't know if this is one you're talking about, Vonda. Yeah, yeah, you start with the starch yeah. and then you pick this and right. pick that and, and it right. gives you it's ideas. Right here. Yeah, so that's Thank what you. she's talking about here, yeah. And then there's also this one, go back. Uh, uh. That first one, Jeff Novak's ideas. And then there's also this meal planning ideas. This is the one I went over last week, meal planning ideas. And then, um, <laughs> Where everything is on the website, again, you can go back to the to the uh, tutorial that's on the website and I'll on the homepage of the website and I go over all kind of where everything's at. But here's, I went over this last week and that's in the re class recording from last week if you missed last week. That's just some ideas on on some on some recipes and things. Then we have a recipe section. Yeah, well, you can get the full tour on, <laughs> on the homepage, which I show you right here. Here's the homepage. And then if you just scroll down here, watch this website tutorial right here. It's about 15 minutes. And I give a full tour of all the different resources that are available on the website. So don't you know, waste the time doing that right now. Thank you. But yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Vonda, could you share that recipe for the ranch dressing? Um, well, it's in my recipe book in the kitchen. I don't know what is wrong with my computer. Um, if you we go hear to you. YouTube, okay. Sorry if I'm freaking you guys out with this stuff. Um, if you go to YouTube and type in nutmeg notebook ranch dressing, it should come up the video and she shares her recipes for, for free. Um, she's a great batch prepper. It works for her and her husband. Um, she's a great resource and um, I, I, I love watching her or just listening to her. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and I want to share some pictures with you all because. Can I, I say wanna... one more thing real fast? I'm sorry. Of course you can. Um, I also, over the last three years, have found that 
giving myself grace um, for not being 100% perfect eating. And sometimes I eat bad food. I have a thing for chips. Um, just giving myself grace um, just took that burden to be perfect off myself. And I just found that really helpful. Well, thanks for sharing that, Vonda. I think it's important for everyone to hear that. And, um, you know, we all have different goals, different motivation. We all have different struggles. And um, the purpose of these classes to try to support each other and, and hearing different ways of coping and getting a uh, change in your life, it's really important for everyone to hear. So thank you for what you've done and your talk. You're welcome. And thank you and Scott, because you guys are my heroes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. thank you. All right. I'm going to uh, share my screen here and we're going to go to new food uh, pictures. And I've got a few pictures that I want to share with you. I want to see if I can make this screen bigger. How do I make the screen bigger? Huh. I don't know. Maybe. I guess that's as big as it's going to get. Maybe if I pull this down, I can I can expand upon that. Uh, it looks like yeah, the, the, the big box up in the top right corner. Right. Right there. OK, good deal. Here we go. So, When we decided to make our change 11 years ago, I didn't know what all of these different greens were. But for those of you who are new to whole food, plant based lifestyle or even old and haven't uh, seen some of these, you know, we want to share with you some of the food choices that you might have. and. Uh, maybe you'll have questions as to what you put them with or whatever it is. But if you look on this, what do you think this is? Anybody? It's spinach. Okay, spinach leaves. You can get those that are pre-washed or you could buy spinach, spinach on your own. You can do fresh. You can do frozen. All of those are good choices. Spinach has, is high in oxalate. And so uh, you don't get quite as much calcium as you do from others. Spinach and chard and uh, beet greens are high in the oxalate. So they tend not to give you as much calcium as the others. And the others here, uh, it looks like chard, uh, collard greens. This is one that's really high in calcium, about 225 milligrams of calcium in a cup. We have a leaf of this every day, my wife and I share. Uh, about three cups, uh, sometimes four of maybe a leaf of collard green, maybe a leaf of, uh, of, of chard, a handful of spinach. And then here's, uh, some of you have not had the pleasure of this bitter lettuce. It, it's kind of got a bitter taste, but after a while, uh, I've learned to crave having a little bit of that. And it's a healthy treat. It's radicchio. Um, it's um, a lettuce uh, that um, is, like I say, a healthy choice. Uh, this here is kale, but it's a curly kale. Uh, there's lacinato kale, which I don't have here, but it's smoother. It looks a lot more like this. That's dinosaur kale. So this is curly kale or I think Russian kale is another name or different brands. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of kale. Again, this is a real healthy green where you get a lot of calcium. Remember, where does the cow uh, get her calcium or his calcium? It's from the greens and as humans, we get our calcium from the greens and the beans. We don't need any dairy in our life. Uh, with the insulin-like growth factor one, the IGF-1, that's a promoter of cancer cells, increases the growth of cancer cells in your body. Uh, if people knew about that, they probably would be drinking less milk, eating less cheese and less yogurt and other uh, dairy products like ice cream. 
All right, let's go on to the next picture. And this is something that I had for the first time, I don't know, it was maybe eight years or seven or eight years ago. It's a sea vegetable. It, Dulse is what Dr. Uh, Gregor had recommended on one of his videos. And he said, eat one of these packages once a month. Well, hey, Charlie, I, we're not, Charlie, we're not seeing the next slide yet. Oh, you didn't? Uh, -uh. uh so let's see how i can make sure that we go to the next slide so you don't see this no we're still seeing the picture with the spinach and the radicchio and the kale uh let's see what is the issue um try highlighting one of those at the bottom okay i highlighted at the bottom did that make a difference no no difference there I cannot believe this. Maybe unshare and then share again. Okay, so we're going to stop the share and we're going to. I notice you had pause, share, highlighted. All right, so let me. You are so smart. So let me see. I got share. Participants can see the screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, and so now I'm going to go over to. Uh, my life of many folders the med students say this would drive them crazy if they had this many things on there but it drives me crazy a little bit uh so here's this and here's the new folder and let's go to the next one you can see this yes yep. there you go we're good, Dulce? Yeah. Yes. Yep. The first time I had Dulce, oh man, I swore I'd never eat that again in my life. It tasted horrible. A half of that was in my mind, or maybe 90% of it, because as I read and studied, I learned I want to get more omega 3s. I want to get healthier, uh, moderate and long chain uh, omega 3 fatty acids. And Dr. Greger keeps telling me this is a healthy choice. And um, so what I did is I snuck this into soups and salads and I tried to hide it from myself little bits at a time until I had about 10 or 15 exposures to it. And now I eat it every morning for breakfast, a small little, oh, two, three inches of in length of dulse uh, that's mixed in with steamed greens. And uh, it's a healthy choice where I also get iodine from this, dulse. Um, so a couple participants have raised their hand. So Scott, you want to tell me if they have a question or ask them? I can't see who's raising Oh, sure. There's, let's see. And no, the only comment in the chat is just about radicchio is easy to grow, costs a lot less than the markets. A okay. spicy flavor yeah that's it so far and you don't see any other participants with their hand raised no i can't i only i can only see you i can't oh. see the rest of the gallery all right well let's see it's ann you got your hand raised and vonda go ahead Ann first then vonda i just hadn't lowered it that's all now i lowered it okay how about you vonda same issue yeah. Um, no, I'm. I. It's okay now, Toby. I don't know what's wrong with it. Um. Anyway, I had something to say, share about the dolls. Yes. Um. After you had shared about that, I watched the Dr. Gregor videos. Um, there went my computer again. Uh. It helps with your thyroid, and with the iodine, and I don't eat a whole piece of it. I tear it up in little pieces and I put it on top of my food, and. So I've never had the thought of, I'm never eating this again because I don't get a whole bunch of it at one time, but I think it's great. Well, thank you for sharing that. And uh, I'd encourage others to consider that. There are other uh, options also. The other options could be wakame, uh, nori, which is used for sushi. And uh, I learned today about kombu. Kombu is another sea vegetable which um has iodine in it and uh, uh i really knew nothing about it but i learned that in the afternoon class today Kobe. 
And that's not kombucha, it's just kombu. K O M B U, I think, or. I've gone out of the class like five times and came back in, and it just keeps doing that. I don't know. All right. So I'm not sure exactly okay. what is happening it's with frozen. your computer, but I am going to go on to the next slide. So we went out. When we became totally whole food plant-based, my wife uh, went online to Mark's Foods and she bought a whole bunch of different kinds of beans, cranberry beans, adzuki beans, marrow beans, uh, rice beans, European soldier beans. There is such a variety of legumes that you can buy and uh, can make uh, this a variety and fun uh, for you to eat. So I am going to mute everybody here because there's a little sound in the back. You what? So if, you, if you could all make sure that you're muted. Um, let's see. I know some of you are new and not used to, to muting, but I think we're quiet again. OK, good. Great. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Next film. Uh, do you see on the left there or right flax? Well, flax seeds has omega threes. They're short uh, chain omega threes, and they can get converted in your body to medium and long chain. But a tablespoon of flax a day is what Dr. Gregor recommends. We have a tablespoon sometimes, a tablespoon and a half or two. Um, and uh, it's a healthy seed, and uh, we'd encourage you to incorporate that in your uh, food choices. Flax, if you just eat the seed and don't grind it up, it goes right through your intestines and you do not get the benefits of the omega-3. So make sure it gets ground up. If you don't have a nut grinder, you can use a mortar and pestle and grind it by hand. Some people do that. Uh, you know, adds a little extra fun and excitement for your morning uh, food preparation. Uh, the other option is if you don't like doing either of those, you can buy ground flax. It's called flax meal and it comes in package and just buy enough that lasts for a month or maybe six weeks because it can tend to spoil. And so the seeds don't spoil. That's the, per the advantage of them for months and months. So Arun. Uh, yeah, I wanted to say that I use coffee grinder to grind flax seeds every week and it's beautiful. Yeah, you have a blade instead of a burr. You, you have to have a blade to grind yeah. it. So if you're gonna use a coffee grinder, make sure it has a blade and not just a burr, but that works well too. Thank you. Thank you. For sharing that. Now you notice to the right of the flax is beluga lentils and French green lentils. Lentils are kind of fun and interesting. Uh, when you cook lentils, they don't all cook up the same way. Just like you have different cooking times for different beans, different lentils can be a little uh, mushier or they can be firmer. So if you're making a burger and you use a beluga uh, lentil, it'll tend to be a bit firmer. And I think the French green tends to be mushier and softer. So you'll learn these as you experiment along. Uh, so follow the recipe. If they tell you to use a particular kind of lentil, you know, there are multiple kinds of lentils. Take that into consideration. Just trying to give you some tips of what worked for us. We tried, uh, finding any chip in the world that would, con you know, that would work because we love chips, you know, any kind. And we looked around and we couldn't find any that really were not, had so much fat that it just was not a healthy snack. So we finally resorted to corn thins um, for a while and uh, rice thins. Now they are processed and they get absorbed much more rapidly uh, in your bloodstream. So it's not the healthiest choice, but it's sure a whole lot better than any animal products that you might choose to use. So 
uh, you know, if you're having trouble with the, and you need a little crunch in your life, uh, the corn thins or, or rice thins might, might work as you're transitioning. This is a wonderful snack, edamame. It's a soy snack. And some of you who are new think, well, I don't know if I want to eat soy. Doesn't that cause uh, breast cancer or cause men to have uh, breast and feminization? Well, the short answer is no, it doesn't. It's, uh, we found out that uh, soy products, even though they uh, look a lot like estrogen, they attach to different receptors in the body and have different effects. And the people who are eating more soy tend to have less breast cancer recurrence and live longer if they've had a breast cancer. So edamame is a really good snack that you, I take it uh, with me to the medical school and use it for a really good, uh, for those of you who are hung up on protein, protein source. Um, we get plenty of protein if you get enough calories. Believe it or not, spinach has 40% protein. So don't worry about protein, but if you want a good healthy snack that'll give you some calories in the four to 600 uh, calorie per pound range, edamame uh, is a good snack that you can carry with you. You can take it on an airplane or a bus or a train or any uh, vacation you're going on. It works well. Uh, then there are these kinds of, um, uh, I don't know, uh, squash and potatoes. So sweet potatoes and regular potatoes and most any kind of squash are really healthy starches for your diet. Really consider incorporating these in various recipes. Um, they're pretty easy to make and, and add some extra flavor to your life. Quinoa is a really healthy grain uh, it has all the amino acids that you need. It's considered a complete protein. For those of you who believe that plant foods aren't complete protein, there are some that are, and the ones that aren't complete proteins, you'll get enough of the proteins. If you eat enough calories, your body's not stupid. It will hold on to the amino acids it needs. And uh, you don't have to worry about combining beans and rice and that stuff, but quinoa, takes on the flavor of other uh, foods on your meal. Like if you're doing stir fry, uh, we had a quinoa cereal when we went to Peru and they made it a chocolate quinoa porridge. It was really delightful. Um, and once you learn to like quinoa, it's uh, pretty fun actually. Um, it's also for those of you who might be gluten sensitive, gluten free, so think about quinoa. Uh, if you have members of your family who just have to have that chicken or beef kind of uh, uh, sensation inside their mouth, take soy curls and cook them up, cook them up with some different spices and whatever the recipe calls for, and uh, you will surprise them. They will think that they're eating chicken or beef when they're actually eating soy, but it's got a texture that is not like tofu, it's not mushy. Um, and so we've used a bit of soy curls uh, in preparing food. Sometimes when we go to potlucks or uh, if we have fa other family members in the past that came over. There are a whole lot of other kinds of things that you could choose. And for a while, we were the roll, thick rolled oats. We got these at Sherm's in Roseburg. That's how we started in the 25 pound bag. These have a uh, part of the outer fiber of the groat um, taken off and it becomes a thick rolled oat. Uh, if, you if you process it a bit more, you get the regular cooking oat meal of five minute kind. And if you process it further, you get the cook in a minute or the rapid cooking and the more highly processed, the more sugar load you get higher. So the healthier you get to the thick rolled oat or steel cut oat or groat, the healthier you'll be. And it's really helps drive down your cholesterol. Uh, it has a lot of soluble fiber and it hooks on to to um, 
the cholesterol or excess estrogen or excess testosterone you might have in your body and it eliminates it. So you get reduced amounts of cancer, reduced amounts of heart disease, reduced amounts of cancer because it hooks up with toxic chemicals and speeds transport of poisons through your intestinal tract. Uh, their TBT, TBP is total vegetable protein. We used that when we were first transitioning. We don't use that anymore. Soup mixes of most any kind are good. Uh, hot cereals may be a really good choice, but oatmeal is one of the best choices. Bulgur is a good choice. Um, we use groats and kamut now. I don't know if I have a sample to show you. And then there's the rice. There are all kinds of different rice in this world, and you can experiment with them and have fun. I suggest you try the black rice. It's called the forbidden rice. It was forbidden for anyone to eat that rice, except I think an emperor in China at one point. And it's a very tasty treat. When you buy rice, uh, if you're gonna be buying a white uh, or brown rice, uh, get it from California because it has less arsenic than rice that you purchase from uh, the South, which used arsenic in, in um, preparing the ground or treating insects or whatever it is. Uh, there's a fair amount of contaminated soil in the South of our country. So get your rice from California or somewhere else in the world that doesn't have arsenic in it. Uh, this here uh, looks like walnuts. Walnuts is the nut of choice, uh, the one that has the most omega-3s. That's what we mainly eat, uh, about a quarter of a cup a day, we measure it out. And, um, you know, for a while we were eating a lot of almonds, we were eating uh, cashews and pecans, but they don't have as much omega-3 as walnuts. So incorporating even a quarter cup or an eighth of a cup of walnuts along with whatever nut choices you want. But if you want the healthiest nut, this Gregor says it's walnuts. That's what we go by. Um, they spoil after a while. So, you know, keep them in a container. You can keep them in a refrigerator, whatever you need to do. Here is the flax seeds with the, uh, a nut grinder where we take a tablespoon or so. And then uh, here are some treats like salsas, salsa and hummus. This is a yellow lentil hummus. Most hummus is chickpeas. Um, I like to show you this because it's an easy dinner. You come home, you're tired, you don't wanna spend a lot of time. So you grab a potato, you throw it in the microwave, you nuke it for whatever time works for your microwave. You cut it open and when you put it in a bowl, you open it up, put a half a can of beans or lentils in there, then put whatever salsa you like, and then take a couple handfuls of greens and throw it all over that. And if you want a tomato or two, you can, but if you have salsa, you don't need to. And then for dessert, have a piece of fruit or two. That's a quick, easy dinner. It's healthy and it's easy to do, and it's very cost effective. Now, you may have some snacks you wanna take. And so dried fruit, uh, my grandkids love this, mango, we buy the big packages. And so dried fruit is a healthy snack to take with you. And if you're gonna be using milk, I'd encourage you to avoid the uh, leche de vaca, I think it is, it's cow's milk, because it has insulin-like growth factor one. And so there, are, uh, which, promotes the growth of cancers. And so get a plant milk instead. Uh, the plant milks you can get are soy, uh, they come in vanilla or plain, or you can get um, oat milk or hemp milk or rice milk or almond milk. Any of plant-based milks don't have that IGF-1 in them. Uh, we make our own with a uh, soy bella. Uh, it's a $109 machine, you put water in it and you put a, about a cup of, of soy um, beans in there and you soak them for about four to six hours and then you run it through the machine over a half hour and you have uh, uncontaminated soy milk and no cartons to deal with. 
Uh, anyone who's interested in doing that will share more information with you on that at some other point in time. But I just want you to know, these milks contain differing amounts of sugar. They can come like 20 or 30 or 40 grams, sometimes 60. Get the one with the lowest amount of sugar, but initially uh, start out with a little higher. If you're used to the cow's milk, especially for your family members, they won't like the taste too much if you don't give them maybe the 60 uh, model of sugar and then cut back week by week from there. That's my recommendation. This is what our uh, spice cabinet looks like. You see there's a ton of different spices in there. It really makes a difference. Uh, my wife doesn't use a lot of these different spices. Actually, she does, but she has her favorites. And I'd say maybe a third of these spices are used on a regular basis, not all three uh, shelves worth. There's a lot of extra um, curries, so many different kinds of curries, many, many different kinds of spices that we use for one recipe and then don't use it again for a long, long time. But uh, you won't go wrong if you have a lot of spices in your world. These here are called tiger nuts. They're an African snack that I found online on Amazon. Um, my grandkids love them. Uh, they taste like dirt initially. Uh, and then they, uh, as you suck on them, they soften up and you get a little sweetness. And man, uh, I really like them. The med students like them. They're called tiger nuts. Uh, if you want a fun snack, which has a lot of fiber, this is a good snack. Tiger, tiger nuts. Uncle Sam, if you don't like oatmeal, you may want to have a cereal uh, that um, has a high amount of fiber in it and is a healthy snack, according to Dr. Greger. It's called Uncle Sam cereal. For those people who are afraid of boiling water or, or cooking any oatmeal and you can't stand doing that, get Uncle Sam cereal uh, and that will will be a reasonable thing. Supplements, we recommend B12 for those under the age of 65. You get a thousand, uh, uh, 2,000 micrograms once a week. For people over age 65, it's 1,000 micrograms every day. And for vitamin D, 2,000 international units once a day uh, for everybody who lives in Oregon, whether you're whatever you eat plants, animals, whatever, we don't get enough sun, best to supplement. Dark chocolate, everyone asks about chocolate. And so here we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, chocolate. Uh, try to get the uh, dark chocolate, the one that has the most cacao. And uh, the cacao comes in different percentages. Uh, my daughter, in law, she talked me into trying this 100% cacao. That means it's no added sugar, um, no added fat. And um, at first it was pretty bitter, but, but now that I've tried it a few times, I've come to like it. And for when I have a chocolate craving, that's what I'll go to. But you know, for it's gonna take a little getting used to for compared to the sweets that you're used to eating like the C's candy. Um, nutritional yeast is something you can place on popcorn. You can put it on top of a uh, pizza uh, without cheese. It has a cheese-like flavor for a number of people. Uh, you can put it on top of salads and soups. Um, nutritional yeast, um, my wife uses it when she makes tofu. She puts nutritional yeast with coconut aminos in a bag. And then she puts the sliced up tofu in this bag, shakes it up, and then she air fries it. And man, my mouth is watering talking about it. It's really a taste delight. This is what our refrigerator looked like at one time when we were not making our own soy. You see the uh, plant milks or almond milk down there. And let's see. The bins are filled with greens here and greens here and greens here. And then there's some mushrooms and there are grapes. And when we were transitioning initially, we'd have this Dave's bread. 
Uh, there is one of his uh, Dave's bread that actually um, can be a healthy bread, a reasonably healthy bread, but not as healthy as eating the whole grains themselves. So if you have to have bread, uh, try to go, we'll go over in one of our classes, the rule of uh, you take the five or multiply it times the five, and you shouldn't have uh, carbohydrates higher than that number in the bread. So if you have three grams of fiber in the bread, should be no more than 15 grams of carbohydrate in a serving of a slice of bread. Uh, let's see. I think that brings us to the end of that. And I want to just share you before I get let, uh, Lisa Chick hop on, I want to share just a couple more um, food pictures with you. And I'm going to kind of run through these pretty quickly here. I don't want to scare you off, but I want to share with you that we eat a variety of greens and fruit and vegetables and whole grains. This is some turmeric, which we used to put in a drink. Uh, we've stopped drinking it. Uh, we used it as a powder on the salads, and now we take it as a pill with pep black pepper. Uh, this is an anti-inflammatory turmeric and a healthy thing. It's in Dr. Greger's Daily Dozen. And then here's what our first half of our breakfast looks like. It's uh, several cups of greens, maybe a little garlic, some radicchio, uh, orange, uh, uh, some garlic in there. And um, let's see, uh, broccoli. We have broccoli, about a half a cup to a cup at every breakfast time with, you see some steamed greens there. Now, for our second portion, you see there's these groats. Uh, my wife likes to put uh, uh, the fruit. Uh, this is peaches, but she'll use blueberries usually or some other kind of berries along with, uh, what are the other berries that she uses? Uh, goji. Yeah, so she uses some small amount of goji berries and she puts her walnuts in there. I like to eat them separately, but we're pretty full when we get done with breakfast. Uh, here's uh, kind of a lunch. Uh, she made some of these rolls, they're quinoa rolls. And then these are air fried potatoes. My mouth is watering again. She, again, these are the quinoa rolls. Uh, I only showed you this because it goes well with uh, hummus. We did that when we were transitioning. I don't eat as much of that anymore. And then uh, you can make some plant-based cookies. Uh, for your grandkids. These are some of the meals that we have. They're very colorful. They've got a variety of legumes and fruit and vegetable. Uh, this here, if you look closely, is a plate we used to give vegetables to our dog. Uh, and let me show you, I'm going to skim through these because I really want to give the time to Lisa. Uh, you see we have beans for breakfast. Uh, we do grow uh, sprouts and we add them uh, sometimes, sometimes carrots, sometimes tomatoes, sometimes jicama. You can make a variety and, and just make it fun for yourself. Um, this here is a, uh, some dinners that we had over the last two weeks uh, that make my mouth water. There was this kale salad and then this I was sweet potato with quinoa something, vegetables. Uh, it was marvelous. This was a lasagna, which was, again, making my mouth water. And this pumpkin pie uh, is to die for. And that's, uh, here's stir fries. We eat quite a bit of that, where you squeeze a little lemon or put balsamic vinegar on there. And that's the end for me. Hey. Uh... Yes, Ken. Uh, you're, you turned your microphone off, Ken. It's still off. Any better? You've been now, you, we can hear you. Oh, I see. I, I saw a subliminal blip in the little slideshow on salads of a really interesting garnish on a leaf. 
The, yeah, that little garnish on a leaf is is a uh, uh, it's Jack in the pulpit. It was a flower that we had from our garden, but I didn't have a lot of time. But good eye. Uh, but was there? There was a creature on it, wasn't there? No, it's called Jack in the pulpit, and it has a, a head on it. And like I'll an show anther? you some kind of anther. Yeah, it's uh, he's got a background, which is the pulpit, and it's a flower. Okay. okay. I want to let Lisa check. Are you here? I want to make sure that you get an opportunity to share what you had to say yeah. today. I'm here. Sorry, I came a little bit late. Is anyone talking after me or do I have the whole rest of the You time? have the time. It's oh, all great. your show. Okay, well, it's hard to follow Dr. Roth, um, but I just have a few things to share and I will try to share my screen here. Okay. And if you can't, I will make you a host, co-host. Okay. Think. There you go. I can see it. The okay, screen. great. Meal so, prepping. Great. I hope that that's what I was asked to talk about. <laughs> We're <laughs> happy right that thing. you did. That's what we asked you to do. Yes. Okay, so my name is Lisa. Um, I'm a third year osteopathic medical student, which is what the OMS3 is. And I'm just going to share a few things. Um, actually, very, very basic things that I think are good for when you're just starting to meal prep and when you're just trying to make this transition. Um, last week, Velvet had a really great talk as well, and I really liked that she got to share her uh, experience too, because I think we have two different ways of going about this. Um, there are many ways to go about this, but for me, my top priorities when I'm meal prepping, I am thinking about time, budget, and having a variety of meals. I'm only cooking for myself or maybe one other person. Velvet was talking about um, cooking for her whole family. So what I like to do is first, because to address my budget issue, I check the grocery store weekly ads every week just for the local stores. And this is helpful because it may feel limiting to just buy things that are on sale, but it actually pushes me to be a little bit more creative and to try things that I may not have um, just because I see them on the ad and they're new and exciting. So I want to find recipes which is the second thing I do, I just go on Google um, or I go on our Facebook page and look for recipes based off of those ingredients. Then the third thing I do is find more recipes based off of those same ingredients um, because I really try not to waste too much food. And so whatever I do buy, I wanna try to eat up, but I don't like to eat the same thing all the time. So I usually don't have the same thing for lunch and dinner. I try to meal prep at least two different things. So I have a little bit of variety. And then the last thing you've already heard so many times is to drink plenty of water and to eat lots of fruit. I really don't limit myself when it comes to fruits and veggies. I just eat however much I, I want, which may not work for everyone, but it's what I like to do. This is my favorite water bottle. It's actually 64 ounces. I try to drink at least two of these a day. In the summertime, I get up to three. Um, and I think water is just very important and a little bit underrated. So um, I think you should aim to just drink water throughout the day as best you can. So for breakfast, this is like the basics for me in order of how often I do these things and also in order of how much time I have. So if I'm very well prepared the night before, I'll do overnight oats, which is like a clean slate because you can add whatever toppings you like and change up the flavors every day, even if you wanted. 
And um, like Dr. Ross is talking about, I usually add chia seeds, hemp seeds. I forgot to put the flax seeds in there, frozen berries, cinnamon, and soy milk, and all of these things um, have a pretty good shelf life. So um, I haven't made soy milk myself, but I hear that it's not too difficult. But again, I don't like to waste any food. So shelf life is also important to me. And then if I wasn't prepared, I'll, I might do a piece of toast with avocado and some greens and seasoning too. I really like nutritional yeast. And um, if I don't have avocado, then I'll go with the almond butter. And if I'm really in a pinch, I'll go with a Lara bar. And these are really great because they just have a few ingredients and are date sweetened. So this almond cookie one um, just has five ingredients, no added sugar, um, and they have a ton of great flavors. For lunch and dinner, um, I again I want recipes that I or that I can use the same ingredients for. So taco salad is great. I can also use the same ingredients to make a seven layer dip. Um, Thai curry is a go-to for me because I can put whatever vegetables in there I want. Same with a bean chili. And then brown rice, quinoa, whatever grains you like, veggies, uh, air fried tofu or air fried sweet potatoes. Um, I've learned that pretty much any vegetables you can just put in the air fryer and they'll pretty much always turn out great. Um, Green bean and mushroom casserole is always been a favorite for me. Outside of Thanksgiving, I'll eat it year round. Uh, and then mac and cheese with nutritional yeast or potatoes or cashews. There's a million different cheesy sauce recipes that um, may be intimidating to make at first, but once you try it, they're really not too difficult. So here's some pictures. I recently purged my phone because I was out of storage. So now I don't have as many pictures of my food. Um, the right picture is really something I eat pretty often. Whatever vegetables I can get into the air fryer with some greens. And then plan B, when all that goes awry, uh, like Dr. Ross was talking about, microwave sweet potato, it's a go-to. There's plenty of variety in sweet potatoes themselves. So it's already interesting enough to try different kinds. And then soups that I make ahead of time and just put in the freezer and portion them out so that I can just microwave and that's all I have to do. Here's a few more pictures. The one on the left is one that I just made last night. Um, trying to add more purple food into my meals. Um, red cabbage, purple cabbage, as Dr. Gregor said so. And uh, here's a purple sweet potato. And then on the right is, doesn't look like it, but it was um, red curry, but I just overpowered it with the vegetables. So you don't see much of the curry. And just a few uh, nifty gadgets that I use pretty much on the daily. This first one is a microwave steamer. I think I got this as a birthday gift a few years ago, and I have now gifted it to several of my friends and family because it's just so easy and very little cleanup. All you have to do is cut your veggies and put them in the steamer, and they're good for a few minutes um, in the microwave. And you can put your potato in there too. Um, I feel like it takes a little bit less time than putting the whole potato in. So you just cut it up and then put it in the steamer and then I can season it. The next one, I specifically have this Tautronics air fryer that my brother gave me and I've used it for probably about three years now. I really like this one because it's very quiet and I've had no issues with it so far. Otherwise, I feel like they're pretty much the same throughout the board, aside from the drawer air fryers, I hear are better than the 
oven type of air fryers that have different shelves in them. So I would go with a drawer type air fryer if you are planning on getting one. And the last one is an immersion blender, which is new to my kitchen appliance um, cabinets, but I have really liked it because it's really good for soups and um, even dressings or smoothies. Um, and also very easy to clean and serves multiple purposes, which is a big plus for me. Okay, and that was a quick presentation. Uh, so it was just the basics, but if you wanted to get more in depth or more personalized with my contact information, um, I do free one-on-one -on -one health coaching. Um, several of you have already reached out, so I'm excited to chat with you all. And then we also have our book club meeting on Thursday at 7 p.m., our first official meeting. So um, if you're interested, you can still email me. Even if you haven't read the book, you're welcome to join in on our conversation. It should be a lot of fun. And then that's all I had. Hope that was enough. <laughs> uh, that was perfect. Uh, that leaves some time for questions, and we'll see if there's someone in the group who has some questions for you. Anybody? That was great, Lisa. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. I had fun. Um, Bonnie, um, your hand's raised. Go ahead and unmute and ask away. Could you talk a little bit about the pros and cons of honey? I recognize that's not grown in a plant. I'm new to this, so tell me about honey. Well, it's a, you know, it's highly, highly sweet. So it's, it's natural. It's, it's not processed, but it's, you know, made by bee. It wouldn't be considered vegan, but, you know, for those that are following a strict vegan diet, if they choose to do that for more ethical reasons, then they tend, people tend to avoid honey, but it's just a hyper palatable. It's very, uh, floods the dopamine. And so it's not something you want to be eating on a regular basis, just because if you're yeah. trying to allow fruit to be your dessert, then I eating lots show... of honey might, uh, oh, might be become, it's make it hard to, exactly. to, uh, I don't know. Oh, I must need to, me to mute everybody up there. <laughs> so I'm, I'm thinking specifically, I like to drink hot tea and I don't like it without sweetener of some sort. And that's the least offensive that I can think of. Yeah, I would agree with that. So if you're if you are just going to put a little honey in your tea or something, that's that's probably fine. It's just if you're yeah, if you're using it a lot on a lot of different things and and whatnot, then it might you know because it's so sweet, it might uh, make it hard to to allow fruit to be sweet, for example. But uh, otherwise, yeah, if you're just putting a little bit in your tea, I don't see any problem with that. How Thank you. How many are you using? at a time would it be oh, a maybe. tablespoon would it be oh, a no, half no, a teaspoon no. more like three quarters of a teaspoon not a half but not a full one okay so try to uh do the least amount as, as you can maybe cut back to half if you're mm -hmm. able to do that some people yeah. use date sugar uh it's pretty sweet also um but it's taken the natural dates and uh kind of dehydrated them chopped it up and uh, that's another alternative that you might consider trying. Okay, uh, thank you. But I agree with Scott that if you're using it just as a taste and not as a food, that it's it's probably okay, unless you're not getting the health benefits you want. If you're not getting the health benefits after a period of weeks, um, then maybe you'll consider cut back, cutting back a little bit more. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I think it's Doug. Yes, uh, for Lisa, Lisa, I wondered uh, what brand of microwave steamer she uses. The one that I use, I got from Amazon and it isn't sold anymore. Um, but I think this one is uh, pretty comparable. I will put the link in the chat for you, Doug. Thank you. 
Okay. Who else has question? I wanted to make a comment. Oh, yes, Meryl. About the steamer. Um, a woman, um, Healthy Emmy, who does the program Slim on Starch, and she follows um, basically Dr. Greg, um, Dr. McDougall's program. She uses Systema, S I S T E M A, their um, microwavable. Um, uh, plastic thing and Systema. When I looked it up, it's out of New Zealand and they're BPA free. So um, it looks like a, a nice steamer, and I'm considering getting that one too. So thank you. Uh, who else has a comment, a question for What's the group? Trotronic air fryer. Where do you get that? I, it was gifted to me. I have the link for it and I can also put that in the chat for you. I haven't seen it in stores anywhere, but you can buy it online. Online, okay. All right. Is there a brand, what it's called? It's the Tautronics. Yeah, okay, that's it. Mm -hmm. Charlie? Charlie? Go ahead, Arun. You can, uh, I see your hands up. You can unmute. Forgot. Okay, I forgot that. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, my question was about sprouting. I know that we can make sprouts from many things like alfalfa and mung, mung beans and lentils and things like that. And I know those are considered live foods because they have a lot more proteins and amino acids. What do you, do you recommend those sprouting? One minute, do I recommend it? Yeah, so he, he's gonna probably go show his sprouts that he, he does <laughs> a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, broccoli sprouts and- Yeah, uh, I not only recommend it, I have them in my refrigerator and we eat them every day. <laughs> There's radish sprouts that, grow really well just a day sooner than broccoli sprouts. Right. And we also have mung beans in our refrigerator. They're easy to do. You put the seeds in the bottom of a jar, uh, a couple tablespoons, and then you uh, fill the jar halfway with water and let them soak overnight. Then you have this, these jars with lids that water will flow through. They're metal lids that you can get online. And you just rinse these once in the morning and once at night and turn them upside down, let them dry. Do that for about three days. Then they're ready to sit out by a window and let them stay another couple of days, rinsing them twice a day. By the fourth or fifth day, you have a jar full of whatever sprouts you want. And uh, they taste great. Uh, and it's a fun thing to do. Um, so I, if you want more information, I'll be happy to share that with you. Just send me an email or whatever it is, and I'll share some videos with you and that sort of stuff. My mm -hmm. video or my email is uh, like a cross C Ross at westernu.edu. So that's cross at westernu, Western University, .edu. Thank you. And I have one more comment. Uh, my wife, Bidut, she loves to have chickpea sprouts and she can eat them raw or steamed. That's wonderful. Yes, strip chickpea sprouts are great. I found that if you don't eat them, they kind of get a little mushy after about three or four days. So I, I tend to eat less of those because uh, the mung bean will last longer. But uh, chickpea is a very wonderful sprout. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks for bringing that up. Okay, Ken and then Vonda. You're muted, Ken. Unmute, Ken. Okay, there you go. Once it's mute. Uh, 
tin corn chips. Do you have a bag of that handy? I don't anymore because we never we stopped using them uh, a few years ago. We've just gone to eating out of bowls and stuff like that. Rarely do we eat that crackers. I think the cracker we use. What cracker do we use? Uh, it's um, Wasa. Wasa cracker is the only oh. thing that we have in our house. Yeah. I I eat those. It's it's like uh, it's like cardboard. <laughs> yeah, it's rye crisp. I grew up I grew up on rye crisp, except I used to put a lot of butter on it. Yeah. Now, now I eat it with uh, salsa or hummus. Perfect, uh, Ken. You've got it. That's it. What's, uh, what's that tuna replacement that we talked? Velva talked about it, and I've heard about it before. It's called untuna. And it's garbanzo beans, and you put a little uh, dulse or sea vegetable with it. There are a lot of recipes. And well, I'll look there about salt. And, and uh, oh. oh, okay. Okay. You Thank you. Right? you use dive cut up apples and put in it. You can do uh, dill pickles, celery, um, little mustard. Um, I put capers in it. I don't know, there's a lot of ways to make unto and a lot of different recipes out there. All of our grandkids love it. It's You know, this is great because I have a lot of things that have been in the refrigerator for quite a while that I don't use anymore. Like you just mentioned capers. Um, what a great <laughs> idea. I have them left over from eating salmon. Now I found a use for them again. <laughs> That's great. So, Vonda. Um, I had something to share about the sprouts. <clears throat> um, I got Doug Evans' sprout book. Yeah. And um, it was great. It taught me how to sprout. And um, I just thought it was really, really helpful. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, he has some videos on YouTube, I think, is where I first learned about it. It could have um, been another person, but I think it's him. Yeah, he's on YouTube. He's on Instagram. He does a lot of um, videos about sprouting and... Uh, He's just all about the sprouts. Yeah, he's an amazing, uh, it's fun listening to him. Marsha, and then a run. Marsha? What do you use young mung beans? Mung beans? Am I muted? Yeah, what do you use your mung beans for? Okay, so the mung beans, I'll be right there. <laughs> Here's a container with the mung beans in it. And I just take and I just take like, um, oh, a fork and I take about a couple tablespoons of mung beans and I put them in the bottom of the bowl for breakfast along with uh, garlic that I've chopped up. And then a, one uh, pepper. I try to add as many different variety of foods as I can, like a hot pepper. I put in the bottom one little one. Uh, Christine doesn't like it, so we don't, I don't put it in hers. And then uh, on top of that, we put uh, a couple tomatoes and the other things. And the steamed greens go on top of the mung beans. And then the beans go on top of the steamed greens. So that's what I do. But... You know, it takes us a while to prepare breakfast, but boy, it's tasty. I'm telling you, it's a treat. I love what I'm eating. Someone would have told me 11 years ago, you're going to love what you're eating. You're not going to be taking any pills at 74 and a half years of age. You're going to be healthy. Uh, I'd have told them, not likely, but that's the facts. Okay. Well, I bought some, money. I bought some and I use them to make that egg substitute stuff and I haven't thought of eating, using them anywhere out yeah you can just eat them plain just like in any stir fry you know you go to a Chinese restaurant or you go to a Thai place and uh, and you put them on the plate stir fry them okay a run there you go okay yeah. couple of quick questions couple of quick questions Scott oh no I mean Charlie one yep. way, uh, you know, you can buy sprouted wheat bread, which is a little bit on the sweeter side, but is that a healthier version for bread? 
Uh, it can be, but be careful about the carbohydrates and the fiber. Multiply the fiber times five, and if the carbohydrate number is, like if there's four grams of fiber in the bread and you multiply times five, it's 20 grams. Shouldn't that be over 20 grams of carbohydrate? Well, right, Again, I'm, yeah, I'm saying that there are sprouted wheat breads with nothing in it, but just sprouted wheat. Probably a healthier choice than, than uh, regular. I don't know what a, a, the other ingredients are, but you know, if you're otherwise healthy, you can have some bread occasionally if you're not taking diabetic medication and high blood pressure and cholesterol lowering medicine. But if, if you're not getting the benefits you want, yeah. uh, eat the foods as they grow in nature. Sure, you know? sure. Okay, okay. And the second question is, maybe you want to spend some time on uh, fermented foods, or maybe you will be doing that anyways. Uh, we won't, but I have that in my refrigerator, some kimchi, <laughs> and I have kind of like a teaspoonful of kimchi every couple days or so, just because it's fun to make, and my grandkids like it, and it adds another little flavor, and it's got probiotics, but I, I don't eat a lot of kimchi. I don't yeah. eat a lot of sauerkraut because of the salt content in it. Right, and that's the only problem. Uh, in Indian food, we have lots of pickles, which are basically fermented, but it has too much salt. So I don't go for it. Yeah, if you're gonna go for it, go for it as a taste treat. Right. Uh, take just a little of it and you know, have fun with it, but don't make it your regular food on the plate. Okay, and then one last question. We seem to love eggplant. Is eggplant a good vegetable? It's an excellent vegetable. Okay. Uh, just don't make it like it was made in Italy when we went on our trip where it was swimming in oil. Uh, <laughs> just, just cook it uh, without oil or very minimally, and eggplant is very healthy choice. Thank you, thank you. Carly, I wanted to yes. add a quick note on uh, dark chocolate. Yes. Uh, if, if people are concerned about Heavy metals and the standards for those are kind of vague sometimes. Consumer Reports recently ran a piece comparing brands and which had they showed which had the least lead and cadmium. Yeah, I saw that as well. Yeah, so it's kind of got to worry about the dark chocolate now. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, and so I don't eat very much of it. But that's really good that you brought that up. Uh, there are contaminants with, with it, and so be careful. You may have noticed also about fish, how a lot of you may be thinking that fish is a healthy choice, but uh, in the news media, uh, fish that are grown around larger populations, the Great Lakes and other areas, they are uh, significant pollution. I think it's plastic pollution contamination, and uh, you should be careful about eating uh, fish. Uh, try not to get sucked in. A uh, couple more questions. Beth, I know it's getting late for you, so you get to ask the question first. Okay, so for the sprouted bread, Ezekiel 4 and 9, um, so the fiber is 2 grams and the carbohydrate is 16 grams. 18 grams. So are you saying you take the two times it by four, so you should have no more than eight carbohydrate? Uh, the two times five would be 10. Okay, so you take the fiber times it by five. Yeah. And why don't you want more carbo carbohydrate? Is that just because it doesn't have as much fiber as it should or? Uh, that's the what my understanding from Gregor. How about you, Scott? Yeah, it just means it's been more processed. The more, the, the higher the carbohydrate to fiber ratio, that means it's more processed, has had more of the fiber and other nutrients stripped out. So you, so it's hard to find breads and things. There's, yeah, there's the Ezekiel bread and there are some breads that do meet the five to one rule, but it's pretty, pretty difficult. So, um, okay, I wonder just, which one, yeah. Cause this is a cinnamon raisin. So I wonder if the, the, just the plain wheat one would meet it. I don't know. Yeah, because if they added, you know, if they add sugar, then that makes the carbohydrate go up and oh, and then the fiber right. stays the same, right? So 
The more, yeah, the, more makes... the more you process it, the more you add to it, the less healthy it becomes. And my other question uh, for Lisa or whoever, um, the basket air fryer, which is what I have, why do you suppose that's better than the trays? I always thought that the trays were better, but I just couldn't afford one or have room for one because I always see Chef AJ talking about her Breville air fryer and how wonderful it is. And I think a lot of the people like the Tammy Kramer and things, but why would a basket one be better? Um, just from what I read from other reviews, I, to be fair, I haven't um, listened to what Chef AJ has said about hers, but from the reviews that I read, people say that it doesn't get cooked as evenly and as well as if you were to use the basket one. And for me, it's easy to just take it out and shake things. I like to do tofu or Brussels sprouts or sweet potatoes in there, and I just take it out halfway through and just shake it of having to flip each one over so i like it for that reason too okay great thank you uh i guess we have uh two last questions ken you're muted kid <laughs> you're still muted get confused there you go what's on my mind these days um this is uh this is a bread that's delicious. Um, it's hard not to want to eat a lot of it, but it, its label is amazing. And I don't know if everybody understands this, but it only has 75 grams or micrograms. Of, um, it has 75 micrograms of salt and 80 uh, calories. So it meets the the uh, balance we're looking for on for salt, salt for salt and then, and then the the other one that we just talked about fiber it, it's perfect it has 15 grams of carbs yeah and it has three grams of fiber perfect so, five you, it, so this is the only bread i'll eat okay and that I just, sounds good there is a dave's bread that uh, meets the same criteria so Oh, there's no sugar in this bread. There's, I think there's some sugar in the Dave bread. Could, you might what's, be right. What's the name of that bread, Kim? I couldn't tell from the well, list. It's, it's Ezekiel bread that Charlie mentioned. Ezekiel uh, four nine. And I like the, I like the, they're all flourless. I like the sprouted grain bread usually find it in the cooler rather than on the bread shelf oh it's it's frozen but it's fine um everybody has it you don't have it freddy's everybody has it but you have okay. to go to the freezer section like he said thank you thank you ken hey everybody it's been great fun scott do you have any last words before we take off what's going on next week and whatever oh Next week's an open forum. So everyone come and just bring questions. We can discuss anything you want, especially for the new ones. You can, we could even do some, uh, if you ask a question and we wanna, if, you know, we might know the answer off the top of our heads. If we don't, we can kind of show you Dr. Greger's website a little bit and show you how we search for answers to questions on, on the nutritionfacts.org. Uh, so that'd be, that'd be good to do. And then, uh, and then in two weeks, we're doing starting our weight management uh, class classes. And actually, Charlie, you'll be doing yours first instead of me first, because I'll, I'm going to be at a work meeting and I'll be showing up to class a little bit late in two weeks, but that's not for two weeks, just okay. to give you a heads up. <laughs> all right. Well, everybody, thank you all for all your participation. Thank you, uh, Vonda and Lisa, Scott and everybody else who participated. Uh, we really had fun tonight and look forward to us seeing you all again in about a week. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks everybody. Thanks Vonda, Thank thanks Lisa, thanks Charlie and everybody. Thank you. Thank you.